Morning, Belinda. I haven't met you yet, I don't think. Belinda's doing her measurements this afternoon, but she wants to jump on and get every scary coaching and information that she possibly can before we shut down <laughs> and be ready to get going in the next one. So she's just going to be listening. Belinda's an amazing artist, so she's just going to be listening in today mostly. Great. Well, welcome, Belinda. Uh, today, we're just going through a little bit of information on the mind and how you can get your mind section to work for you. So I'll just start by sharing my screen. Now, Shana, let me know if is it still working now. Yeah, that's perfect. Cool, cool. We love technology. There's retrogrades that are coming through have been wreaking havoc with us. <laughs> so the mind is first priority. And Belinda, we'll, you'll learn more about priorities as you go. We'll go through that uh, this evening. It's first priority for half of the health types. So that doesn't mean that for the activator and the guardian and diplomat that it's not important. It just means that there are other things that they'll need to have in place before they're more able to address the mind. However, the sensor crusader and connector really need to address their mind and have their mind well nourished and well looked after in order for the other things to fall into place. So the sensor, they'll mostly use their mind to assess their environment, to make sure that they feel safe. So they'll be very active in their mind. And that's just so they get a sense of safety around them because they are the smallest of all the health types. The crusader, they'll use their mind a lot for mental stimulation and for learning. They're always gathering new information to get the leading edge over everyone else. <laughs> the activator, they, to stimulate their mind, just like the connector, they need a lot of variation and the activator will learn through pain. So they won't often think a lot of things through. They will do first, think later. And that means they make a lot of mistakes. Which is why the diplomat's so great for the activator because the diplomat's more likely to assess all of the information before they make decisions. So they make less mistakes, but they don't always take action. I've skipped a little bit ahead there, but the diplomat, they, for their mind to work really well, they really like to have a lot of rhythm in their life. And as mentioned, they make sure they're aware of all the things around them before they make a move on something. Uh, the connector, as mentioned, loves a lot of variety. The main thing in the connector is they feel freedom and they don't feel trapped. Uh, the connector also will process things out loud. So if something's on the connector's mind, they'll actually need to talk it out. If you try to get them to write or go inside themselves, like you would with a sensor or crusader or any ectomorph, they'll need to go outside and talk with someone else about it. The guardian, they, their mind is normally pretty relaxed, pretty steady and pretty, they're pretty calm beings normally. So the body will match the mind. So the same hormones that influence the size and shape of the body will also influence how the mind operates. So really great example on this is the activator. The hormones that influence their physical development, so the testosterone will make the same make data a little bit more volatile, a little bit more fire. So the, the same hormones involved in their, their small size also influence how their mind operates. Same with the, the guardian, the prolactin makes the guardian quite a big person, but it also makes them very nurturing, a very calm. Uh, it also, actually I'll move to this a little bit in the next slide. It also gives the guardian a lot of mental resilience. So the guardian will be able to deal with a lot of it, the guardian will be able to deal with a lot of other people's stress because the same hormone that contributes to their size also makes the, motor, the neurons in their brain very resilient to stress. Sage, uh, you, um, you blacked out during the activator. I didn't hear any of the activator except the first three words. Did, did everyone else not hear anything? The, the, um, it did glitch out for a moment there, but I thought it might have been just for me. Yeah, no, that's okay. So the activator, this, the hormones that make the activator smaller stature, so testosterone is very dominant in the activator's um, 
running through the activator's blood. So the, the testosterone makes the activator shorter in stature. It also makes the activator a little bit more fiery uh, and a little bit more aggressive and more competitive. So the same, that same hormone that influences their stature also influences their demeanor and how their mind operates. So the, the ectomorphs or the crusaders and the senses, particularly the senses, are smaller people. So they're, the brain waves that they more comfortably sit in is the beta brain waves, and that's a very active, very active state to be in. And the main reason for that is because they need to sense the environment around them and be aware of the environment around them in order for them to perceive it as safe. So that's why they're very, very mentally active. They really need to remind themselves to rest their mind, which sounds counter feels counterintuitive to them because they're using their mind to ensure that everything around them is in place so that they feel safe. Uh, the mesomorph, the activators and the connectors, they will happily sit in a theta state when they're moving. So to get an activator to meditate, you can get them to meditate if they've had quite a high intensity exercise preceding it. So they're physically exhausted. They will go into a meditative state a little bit easier if you just get them to be still. However, they'll go into, uh, when they're moving, they'll go into a theta state and that is a form of meditation for the activator. So I can attest to that in the morning when I walk, my body is active and moving. And that for me is a form of meditation. So I might do a breathing meditation while I'm moving. I might just choose to become aware of my senses or what I'm seeing, feeling, hearing while I'm moving. And quite often, I often listen to, to podcasts and things when I'm moving as well. But what will happen in the morning is I'll receive lots of information and guidance as someone would in meditation while I'm walking in the morning because my brain is most receptive to it because it's going into that theta state. Um, the the endomorphs or the guardians and um, diplomats the diplomats do think a lot um, but uh, typically the guardians the pure endomorphs they will sit normally day to day in a very relaxed alpha state not a lot bothers them they're the biggest of the health types, so they don't really need to be aware of their surroundings a lot to um to keep themselves safe uh, they're the primary um, what the guardians are really good at is digesting. So when we're digesting food, it's really great for us to be a, an, in an alpha state because it switches on our vagus nerve, which helps us to digest. So they are resting and digesting a lot of the day. Uh, now to touch on your actual mind section on your app and to understand how to understand how to get that working for you, there's three sections to the mind. So the first one is using my mind for mindfulness. So this is the basic mechanics of your brain and how you perceive the world. This is biologically how your brain functions. So our perception of how we perceive the world, our perception of our biological function of our brain, we can perceive it as positive or negative. So an example I like to give our CEO, Cam, due to the prolactin levels in his brain, He's very aware of what people think of him and very aware of the surroundings in that context. And he used to get very anxious about that because he thought it was a bad thing that he cared so much about what people thought of him. Then he decided to change his perception of that because he presents a lot and he uses that ability to understand how people feel to be able to adjust his presentation style and make sure that the people he's presenting to are receiving that information well and that they feel comfortable. So yes, he's definitely able to perceive how people uh, understand how people are feeling around him and how they're viewing him, but he's decided to not, rather than to view that as a bad thing, he's now sees it as a positive thing. So we can all do that with those, um, with those basic mechanisms of our brain, which are biological. Same with our um, natural brain function. That's another biological function of our brain. And this is the best way that we can use our brain to get the, the most out of it. So the best way to put our brain to work. There's also best times to put our brain to work as, as well. So if we can capitalize on that, it's the easiest way to us, for us to alleviate any difficulties and to minimize the stress in our lives. 
The third section of the brain is when we're in the zone. This is how we'll naturally work when we're in the zone and it gives us information on how to maintain optimal function of our brain and how to optimize our brain and how to take care of it and nourish it. So for example, I'm quite an introvert, biologically an introvert. And so it's great for me to have some time out and to rest my brain. But if I do that too much, my oxytocin levels will drop, which is not great for me to maintain human connection. So again, rather than me judge that about myself, that I can perceive it as, oh, maybe I don't really care about people. I don't really want to be around them. It's like, no, it's a good thing for me to do that and to rest and take time out. However, I need to acknowledge if I do that too much, I'm actually losing connection with people. And so what I'm going to do to give it an example is briefly go through the section my mind section or someone else. Oh, I could go through mine first really briefly. And then if anyone wants me to have a little look at theirs, I can. Is there any questions so far? No? Just enjoying my cabbage juice this morning, Shana. You're doing so well. Um, guys, I'm probably going to grab that last slide that Sage had with the different sections of our mind. And considering that Belinda is going to get her measurements done this afternoon, uh, we're going to finish hers off this afternoon. I'm going to use this as a bit of a carrot, guys. I'm going to pop this into the Facebook group, that one slide. And I would really love today if you got to spend just three minutes in your mind section and grab a statement from each of those three sections that you find most relevant or most intriguing or most wonderful and just reflect on what Sage has presented here today and I'd love for you guys to get involved and just jump into the group into that post and just pop down a statement from each of the three sections just quickly highlight it on your phone or screenshot it and just give us some feedback about what you think or feel about that so we can open up a conversation and, and um, enable you guys to delve a little deeper into that. And I'll give you an example on how to I'll go through my mind section just to put it into context so how my mind will biologically work uh, is it's, it's, I enjoy being creative. So this one, I may enjoy engaging my senses and physical responses through visual stimulation, music, flowing dance, coordination, touch and delicious foods. So I really, the dance and music, definitely, I, it lifts my mood if I am playing music and dancing, which I quite frequently do when I cook. <laughs> also play music while I'm training. And when I have to use coordination to train, if it's not too taxing and it's fun, uh, it is one thing that I really, really enjoy as well. Um, I may enjoy creating, painting, design, not a whole lot painting, but I will definitely enjoy um, refurbing furniture. So my artistic flair will come out and refurnish uh, refurbishing furniture and um, design around my house. So I also have a lot of beautiful things around my house. So what that does is there's a lot of colour. I'll give a little bit of a spin around and you can kind of see like there's a lot of re lots of things that I collect, lots of colour, lots of vibrancy. I was going to have a neutral theme in my living area and I bought a rug that's made out of all recycled silk sari so it's really brightly colored and then the whole room is is color like there's nothing neutral about this space and what that does is it really activates my mind it's interesting and it keeps my mind happy if i was in a in a surroundings where it was dull and metal and and not very vibrant my mind would it would start to affect my mind in a negative way and so this is just the, the biology and how my mind is, is set up. Sage, you said um, last week or whatever that you're, even though you're an activator and I'm an activator, the things in our profile could be different. Because um, I, well, I mean, we've only done two things, but I mean... Those are perfect for me. And your house looks like a mirror of my house. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so with that, so our profiles, we'll find with activators, they have similar genes. 
we will respond diff we've had different environments you and i definitely because we've grown up in different eras in different areas so our genes have responded differently to our environment but we'll see similar expressions of our genes in our health types and so that's that's where yes we have a health type but it will be unique to you because we'll have a different set of genes we'll have a different environment that we've been bathed in from the point of conception and so they'll be expressed in a different way However, there'll be those patterns of, of biological function. And so you'll find with a lot of activators, particularly if, if they're in tune, there'll be a lot going on in their houses. It'll be, and same with connectors, lots of color, lots of stuff. Um, it doesn't necessarily, like my house is very ordered, but there's a lot of stuff here and it's, there's a lot of lots going on. <laughs> and, and, and it's good for our minds. It makes us feel better. And the kind of, you can see how, um, that is place. Like if we go into the place section, it is it, it's place, place because you can't really separate everything. Your place is good for your mind. And so they'll kind of bleed into each other a little bit there as well. Yeah, I, I've been criticized for that too. In fact, in Ecuador, I had a, ma a manager, a apartment manager, um, who didn't even want to come in my house. He said, my God, I walk in there, there's so much color, I can't stand it. And see, he was a crusader. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was something. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah. The crusaders and senses like their place to be quite ordered and functional. So is there a purpose? Whereas I've got 50s glassware that I collect. I go online, I go to op shops, I collect it because it's colourful, it's different, it's interesting. There's stories behind it. Um, but to a crusader, they're like, well, what is the point of that? Hmm. Like, well, it's, it's interesting. I like it. It's quirky. So and in, saying that, in saying that, senses are our ultimate creative artistic people. So they're the ones that actually will have, they may have an artistic room of which is mm -hmm. looks chaos because it is their artistic flow space. But if you go into the rest of their house, it will potentially be well-ordered and neutralised. But yeah. coming back in, Angela, you made an appointment about... Um, you being the same this is why your profile is amazing because we keep referencing back to what are the things in your profile because this will state your natural state of mind um as compared to things we've learned or chosen or become the things that have become a behavioral um adaption yeah and i can see the the trail through my whole life yeah, yeah, it's really interesting when we start to um, delve a little bit. Further. I was reading something the other day and I, and I went back like 25 years. I remember um, my chiropractor telling me, oh, you're whatever it was. And I remember, and that's just what my profile says. That yeah, I, wow. do, I do all the time, you know, so yeah. That's really, it's interesting, yeah, really interesting. Um, okay, now my natural brain function, I won't go through all of these, just a couple of them. In order for me to get the most out of my brain and really put my brain to good use, this section will guide me through to how to do that. So I may function best when I have an inner state of calm. I may prefer steady activity without peaks or state of chaos. Now this one, because I'm on the cusp, this one's quite interesting because other areas of my platform will say I don't mind chaos. So it took me a while to get my head around that and I had to really sort of start to explore it a bit further. So the sections that say I don't mind chaos, it's when it's outside of me. So if I'm sitting, I can work at a cafe and I actually work better if I go outside of my house, there's stuff going on around me. I actually sit there and work better because the chaos is outside of me. But if inside it's chaotic and there's stuff going on and I can't process it, then I can't, I, my brain starts to shut down. And so the best way then, because we know that activity helps me go into theta, the best way for me to order my brain, this is why exercise is number one on our list of priorities, the best way for me to start to get some clarity is to go move. And so this is where it gets super, super interesting as well. So I may need to cruise at a regular rhythm that is controlled and stable. I may not appreciate chaos. So again, it's kind of similar. And I do, I like the day to have a fairly set routine I'm okay if there's variation within that routine, but there's sections of it. Like my mornings will generally run exactly the same. 
and I've been diagnosed also with ADD. So I have to have it the same because that means it's consistent. It keeps it without chaos. It's predictable. And then I can get on long Then I can do the stuff that's very, that's changing. And I can do that quite well. Um, I may feel engaged or I may feel in harmony when engaged in repetitive activities because it gets my body moving while the mind, the mind quiets down. As long as I'm not bored, such a task can be relaxing. So it's the morning walk. I love that. Uh, yeah, so all fairly the same. So in order to get the most out of my brain, it's important for me to have inner calm. The best way for me to find inner calm is morning, but that's my morning walk, is to keep things rhythmical and so I can clear my head and process the things and then I can put my brain to work. So this is super helpful. This, how do I get the most out of my brain? It's super helpful. So that's how that section works for you. Now the last section is what I referred to um, before and you'll find it's really funny because mine's number five for activators. It's, you find it's not as comprehensive as for some of the other health types because it's their first priority. They really need to pay attention to that. It's, it's not overly comprehensive as mine as I would be for uh, sensor. So I can feel very determined when I feel certain about things. In this situation, I may not be persuaded or let go of my ideas. I look at things logically as I'm calculating and pondering the right decision, which may make others feel as I'm detached. Although I'm simply considering the logical side and not the emotional side of things. So this is quite an important one to understand for Shana, because she works with me. <laughs> and for me and my perception of how I am. So also important for me to be aware about this because I know Shana's profile very well. If I feel certain and I might not be persuaded, however, I know it's within Shana's field of genius and what she's really great at. I step back a bit and go, okay, this is not a time for me to be headstrong. This is a time for me to see someone else's point of view or put it into a different perspective. because so I know it's her strength and I know that I'm headstrong. Shana can be, she knows I'm headstrong. She knows that I'll just say no straight away. She's pretty good at that. She forgets sometimes. She goes, oh, no, you didn't like that. I go, oh, no, I, I can change my mind. <laughs> I may just say no straight away. It's an activated thing to say no, but we don't always mean it. And so even knowing that about each other means that she, she just understands that's my very, very biological for an activator to just say no. So this is really, this is quite um, very, very useful to understand these things. It, I may feel as I'm detached. People can perceive me as being detached because, and it's an emotional detachment because we're just, and this is quite an ectomorphic thing to do. We just see the logic behind things. Um, it's really difficult for me to make emotionally based decisions when it's, even I have trouble explaining it <laughs> when there's a logical way to make the decision. I, I can't get my head around making the decision based on emotions. Shana helps me with that as well, don't you, Shana? <laughs> and it's a natural brain function. So rather than me judge myself and think I'm not even caring about what everyone's thinking, I understand it's my brain biologically is, has difficulty doing that. So I will ask someone like Shana, who's very good at feeling a situation and understanding a decision that might be best uh, to care about everyone involved rather than it just be the logical, rational, best decision, because that's not always the best when we're dealing with people who have emotions. So Shana comes in and sh we both understand this about me and she'll help me. So because how many of you could reference this to your own family potentially? Like I'd love you guys all just to sit for a second <clears throat> and reference back, like maybe mum or dad or a brother or a sister were that person who would not necessarily emotionally see the conversation the way you're feeling it or expressing a situation. And then the other parent or another sibling may actually have this amazing compassion. And now that we can have this awareness of, knowledge of different bodies reacting and requiring different energies and conversation hopefully this gives you guys an opportunity to really piece that together and see a little bit more love and compassion for our, my father was the same you know i could never do anything good enough everything i did he always had a rational logical next step or improvement or 
way of doing it better. But that was his logical brain of caring. Whereas for me as a feeler, I just wanted him to go amazing. Great job. That's so awesome. So can you guys see how knowing this knowledge about ourselves and about each other can be so vital in great, greater awareness and acceptance and, and connection with other people as they are. Yeah. Yeah. Because what we're able to do is instead of judging others and ourselves, which often leads to blame and shame and those, those feelings that don't have a lot of purpose, we can, if we understand, we can replace that judgment with understanding and compassion, not only for other people, but for also ourselves. So it's, that's how it, if this, what PH360 does, it really, it really helps our relationships in understanding ourselves first and then understanding each other as well. Because if we're able to have compassion and understanding for ourselves, it's more likely to extend to other people. And I know I'm preaching to the converted there with someone like EJ. <laughs> um, and this is the last one here that I referred to earlier. I may seem like I'm open because activators are generally quite animated, but deep down I am introverted. And so I do need a lot of, oh, and this is typical of activators. We'll go on, I'm on, I'm interacting with the people. Okay, now I need to not, I'm on, off. Now I'm resting. And to know that's actually good for my brain to sit out and be inside myself process. Um, I don't judge it if I'm done socially. I'm normally done by the afternoon. I'm good in the morning. <laughs> Um, and this can be strong when my oxytocin levels decrease, which isn't great for human connection. So I do make sure, especially with my son, that I connect with him. And he'll ask me, he'll say, can I have a hug still now at 11? And I really make sure I feel into my heart when he asks me so that he can feel the connection because he's very sensitive. I have a cat as well that helps. So I, I really know that it, I, it can drop in me. My son will sense it. And so... I'll really make sure I connect to that when he asks me and even when he doesn't ask me, obviously, and take time to do that because I'll want to go and be by myself because maybe I've interacted with people all day, but it's still something that's really important for me to do for someone else. And so this is where it helps to understand that natural way that you'll be. And particularly if I've been in the zone and working a lot, but this helps me within my relationships. So you can start to see how that it's, it, quite important for you to understand how your your mind works so in saying that does anyone want to volunteer shana you might have to bring it up because i don't have profiles anyone's profile and belinda you won't have a uh, won't have a profile yet but do you want us to go through some of the sections of your brain or to share any of it with us i've muted everyone by the way just to stop the feedback so if you want to jump up and while you're doing that while you're thinking about it you guys will actually see that in the mornings sage runs the program in the afternoons evenings i run the program that's because we're both flying in our greatest genius zone like in the morning sage is onto it i'm a little bit more ladi da in the evening i'm generally onto it and sage is quite vaguing out and it's really cool to be able to see us in our different power zones, guys. So once you know this about yourself and about your partners and or business partners, this becomes really, really involved and really wonderful to make magic together. Yeah. And we actually go into our genius section to, to see that a little bit too, because that will give us information on when the brain is... More. But this is all coming. This is all coming in our next actual edition. So, um, our next edition of what we're doing for coaching is actually really going to comprehensively go into understanding self, understanding each other, and then understanding the relationships between and the strengths and the uh, the points of greater uh, understanding of others <laughs> and how to help them. Yeah, definitely. Is Angela muted? Can you? Yeah, I'm muted everyone. Do you have a question, Angela? Yeah. Um, what, uh, what differences are there when you're dealing with the same type as yourself versus when you're dealing with the other five types? In, in what do you, how do you mean? Well, for instance, I mean, you and I are both activators and you were talking about your son and when you're ready to, to cool it, well, I mean, we're in totally different situations because I live alone. And, but, but anyway, if, um, if, if I were there, 
um, how would we be different or would we not be different or, we or can, yeah, what? We can mind if you like we're probably most likely to be pretty similar because I think you'll probably sit somewhere oh no you're a 125 but there seems to be some inversion in you um or actually no just some ectomorphic um tendencies so we'd have to look at the section of your mind and have a little look but what I'm talking about is just I mean in the everyday world if um I'm thinking of I don't know what anybody is, certainly not a friend 25 years ago. I don't know what she is, but reading about all, I'm reading about all of this and thinking about all of this, I'm thinking that she might be an activator. Mm. And I've had a lot of frustrations dealing with her. Oh, and, so that, that's my question. I'm, I'm specifically thinking about um, when I asked her to zoom with me or skype with me because i want to see her i'm sick of electronic <laughs> communication she said i don't zoom <laughs> you well, know i mean there is that, that that sounds like an activator response to me and there is always going to be elements so as much as px360 is a great tool it's also understanding that you still are an individual and you're still a human having a human experience in your own unique way What's within the PH360 platform is a little bit more about how the brain, the personality or the persona um, is activated or deactivated and how we can understand the basics. But people's life experiences, unfortunately, will shape them in their own unique way. Um, mm -hmm. We can only give you so much. There are the beautiful idiosyncrasies of the individual human that we can never explain. Um, but it does sound like an activator. That how, Yeah, <laughs> and, and quite often what bothers us about someone else can quite often be about us about, so, yeah I'm very aware of that as well and I'll, I'll so what someone said that to me and it bothered me i'd be like oh what's that telling me about myself maybe i do that well i'm you know i have a lot of trouble with outreach with reaching out because I'm very independent and resourceful and I'm an only, I've been an only child all my life and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so for me, it's, it's very obvious for me, I don't wear it on my sleeve, but it's very obvious that I need connection. I need physical connection. You know, I need touch and in this situation I need zooming and that sort of thing and throughout my life I've had people that just say oh I don't like talking on the phone or I I don't you know uh, I'm I'm too busy for that or I don't I don't want to deal with that or this or that regardless of the fact that a friend was telling them that I had a need you know and so so what you're saying is I should look and see if I ignore other people's needs? No, not at all. I would say there is, and this is presents in my profile, is to communicate, to because you may come across a certain way, like I'll come across detached and I'll come across like I'm good and you may too. And so there's a section in my profile where it says um, be honest about who you are. So, and EJ might have something to contribute to this too, as well, because I'm aware that it's within her, definite within her field of work, is that it could be um, a great idea for you to personally communicate to the other people, other person and expectation. However, also respecting that it's, it's possible that it's not a great time for the other person, but it could be a valuable exercise to directly communicate a need to someone yeah, people have told me all my life. I remember, you know, when I was 12 in my little scout troop, you know, the leader told me um, <clears throat> that I, I, I don't need anybody. I, I'm self-sufficient and I'm good at that. So she's going to go help the other people because, you know, you don't need anything. And I've had people like in this COVID-19 thing, you know, when it first started, I've had a couple of friends write after a week or two and say, well, 
I just thought I'd say hi. I'm sure you're fine because you're always fine and you always take care of yourself. So have a nice life, you know. And it, so, this is actually, so this is actually the diplomat part of you. So diplomats will always seem like I'm coping, I'm good, I'm fine. And everyone will even come to you. So you may find you're not fine, but people will come to you with their problems and you're still able to help them. And people always say to me, I, if I ever have an emergency, I hope you're around, Angela. Yes. Because and so I've, I've been around and people have had epileptic fits and heart attacks and things in the office. And I'm the one who takes care of it and goes, you know. And Yeah. So this is the diplomat thing. And I remember this with Shana too quite often. This is how it helps understanding each other. Even when I offer help, she might say no, as if not to trouble me. So I'll insist, especially if it's something really simple, like when we're away in Bali, she had a headache. I said, do you want me to go get some Panadol for you? Oh, no, 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 don't worry. I'm like, it would take me five minutes because they're always quite capable. And so people forget that they're not always capable. And so, yeah, it's, that's a really interesting one. That'll, that'll be the diplomat side of you. But yeah. do you want and to reframe that for Belinda? There is um we are all different elements of every different health type in some percentage. There is no one human that has the same percentage of each of the six within them. That's why we are all so unique. But of the six different health types, every single person is a percentage of each of them, but dominant most in the one of which they are tagged, the one of which they are labeled. That is their dominance. So Angela has a, a major dominance of two polar opposites. Mm. She's a 60-40, so 60% of her is pretty well activator, 40% of her is actually her, her, what we would, Sage and I would giggle about would be her shadow would be the activator part of her, the, uh, sorry, the diplomat part of her that's the polar opposite. So we can even go into understanding people's shadows and things like that sort of a thing when we look at these sorts of statements. Angela, it's really interesting. It's probably something for a one-on-one -on -one session with you, me and Anne is something I just picked up on is I want you to jot down um, that original story from your scouting um, okay. where you were told you're independent enough. Can you please write that down and you and I need to talk about that afterwards and we'll take that up with Anne. I think that's a very important timeline aspect for you where an original story may have begun. Mm. Oh, great spotting there, Shana. Love your... <laughs> well, there's about 800... Linda, the, the stories... There's about 853 more stories just like that in I think seven, it comes down to 77 it. years. You know? yeah. <laughs> and I think that'll be the diplomat part of you, just one more thing. Um, diplomats quite often, the, you're an activator, but you have many diplomatic traits. And remembering that sometimes um, diplomats will sit in our past mm -hmm. and um, when we sit in our past, we will be stuck in the pain and we will re-loop the pain of the past as diplomats we just keep looping back into that story because that is what we know and that is what is safe so remembering sometimes the diplomat part of you may be anchoring in that you have these memories and these traumas and that's how you live and how you be does that make sense that'll be your diplomat tendency anchoring in those thoughts emotions and feelings yes and my mother always relied on me even when i was 12 or 14 years old you know, when she wasn't able to do something or wasn't well, she, you'll do it. You're good at it. You, you know, that sort of thing. So Yeah. Um, oh, EJ's internet's dropping out. Um, and Angela, do you want to um, look at part of your mind section and go through briefly with us? Do you want to do that? Sure. sure. Donna, do you want to bring up... Um, Angela's mind section. We'll also touch on your social too, as this spring it on you. I've got a I've got a challenge for you that you may or may not accept. Are you to me or China? You. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, to join Facebook, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> social is so social is number three on our list of priorities and we've had a few discussions this week amongst some of the other coaches and it would appear that the third priority for the health types often is 
one of our challenges, and I can attest to this because I've got the introverted side. So social, I'm like, eh, I don't need social. I'm good. I can sit at home with my cat. No worries. And I can. It's not great for me though. And so what the social, I've now, as I was writing some manuals for us, I was like, oh, social, third priority. Maybe I should pay attention to this. <laughs> I can't believe it took me this long. And so we're in lockdown. So how have I gone about socially is I've actually started to interact with people online more in the context of Facebook. And I've done it. I'm the same as you. I was like, no, I don't want to do it. My Facebook is for, for my friends and family. It's, I don't do it a lot. I don't want to. Um, it's private through Shana's encouragement and by me acknowledging that social is really important for me too. I went, I'm going to do it. So I've started interacting more on Facebook socially. I've befriended people I don't know who are PH360 people. And it, it really is, I'm really happy. It's, it's making me feel more connected to people who are like me, which then helps my work because I kind of, it makes me be a little bit competitive knowing what other people are doing, which is great for me to be inspired. Because I've, go, I've gone into my social section. I've gone, okay, this makes sense. I'll do it. And I've, I've, it's been great. I highly recommend. Okay. She's got mind up. Did you want her to have social up? Oh, good reflection. We can look at social later. Yep, we'll go through mine now. Now, on this section, it doesn't, um, on this uh, view of it, because it's from the coach's side, it doesn't divide it. So I do my to do that as we go through. So this first statement, sometimes I get excited about making major decisions, but I do best when I take time to think about them first. Others may think I'm slow to decide or overly cautious, but I like to consider all options and see how it will play out in the future. Then I can feel certain about my decision and commit to it. This is because of my levels of noradrenaline. So this is saying here, this is saying you can be compulsive. This is perfectly saying I'm a bit of an activator and I'm also a bit of a diplomat. <laughs> I can be compulsive. I'm better if I take time to think about it. When you think about it, it can look like you just take, you're not doing anything about it. But when you're certain, you just do it like an activator. And that's because of the noradrenaline, which is an activator hormone. Does this, sound like you to you well this is uh something that's been also been evident all my life um i i am an introvert appearing to be an extrovert <laughs> appearing to be gregarious i'm always the leader i'm always the in charge i'm always the organizer you know that sort of thing but i am an introvert i process uh I process things slowly and and I research sometimes to a fault. I can get myself so many options, I'm immovable. I don't know how to decide as I make too many options. So, um, but uh, because others don't see all that mind work in, in the background, um, all of a sudden I'm just talking to a friend and I say, hey, I'm going, you know, it's, it's December 1st, and I say, I'm going to Dubai for Christmas on a cruise. And they say, what? what? You know, what are you doing? How are you, doing? <laughs> what, you know, well, I've been thinking about it for months and months and months. In fact, yeah. a year ago, blah, 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 you know, that sort of a thing. And um, people see me as methodical but quickly methodical they see me as well prepared but quick to decide yeah perfect so that exactly will demonstrate um a natural brain function of yours that's perfect i love it mm -hmm. uh, yeah we'll go through one more and see if that and i love how you just went straight into an example to demonstrate that's perfect uh, <laughs> we'll go down a little bit um this is a good one. People generally find me to be tolerant and accepting as well as genuine and direct. So we spoke about this the other day. When things are balanced in my life, I tend to feel stable with a sense of peace and harmony in my life. This is due to my oxytocin levels. So this is 
interesting, combined with my insulin like growth back to levels. So that is um, that saying diplomat, diplomat tendencies again. So just now, tell, tell me about oxytocin. What I hear the name, but I have no idea what does it do. It's obviously it's a hormone, right? Yes, oxytocin is your bonding hormone. So bonding. It's, uh, oxytocin is the only hormone that is a positive feedback hormone. So it it helps you bond. So the more you bond, the more you want to bond. And so it is a self-feeding hormone. So it's the connection hormone. So it's a hormone that helps you connect with your loved ones, that makes you feel those feelings of joy and love in your heart is an oxytocin hormone. Um, so this statement we spoke about the other day in regards to your work. Um, you are genuine. So this was, you were speaking about the person you worked with and your directness kind of put him off foot. But then when he realized there was gen, you genuinely cared. And this is, this relates to that second um, statement there. You value principles and think of the greater good. He kind of was a little bit more soft when he realized the directness behind that. Does that resonate with you? That third statement there in that context? Yes. 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 When things are balanced in my life, I tend to feel stable with a sense of peace and harmony in my life. Yeah. At this time in my life, I don't have any animals and I've had animals mm -hmm. my entire life. Well, from the time I was seven until, until I left the U.S. 10 years ago. And now I have no animals in my life and especially with this mm -hmm. lockdown it's really affecting me yeah it was i was thinking i think i was thinking about this when we were speaking earlier on in the week i, I actually crossed my mind that that might be a really lovely thing for you if it's possible um okay we'll go through can you scroll up a little bit shana and do, is there one that you if you want to briefly read through angela is there one that maybe confuses you or you disagree with or one that um, really resonates that you might like to go through? Mm. Mm. The one at the bottom, I may be strategic in a social setting and look for ways that I can have that I can have an influence or an advantage in a situation or event. I don't know that about myself. In the past? Well, my job has often been to create change. Mm -hmm. Um, and so this could, and this is where understanding it, because it sound, that sounds like it could be like a, not a very nice thing, but yes, that's, that's what I <laughs> yeah. But that means that the activator always wants to have the edge over someone else and be the best. It's just how we are. And so what that might mean is if you're in a social situation, there's someone who's influential that could benefit your career, and we're also remembering your intention is always pure, you always have the greater good in the mind. That's a great thing about you. So if you're in a social situation and there's someone you can speak to that's gonna give you the edge to be better what you do and what you do always has a good intention, then you're gonna take it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't actually, when we look into the whole context of the way your brain operates, it's not for yourself. You're not a selfish person your intention is to, is to, you've got credibility, you've got um, integrity, and you're doing things for the a bigger picture. It's not for you, you're not a selfish person. So if you wanna get ahead, it's, it's for a good reason, but you'll be strategic about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that, would you say yes or no? 
Yeah, that's good. I think about when I was going for a job, a big job, a big job with the governor, and um, I did develop a strategy to do that. Mm. Yeah, to do it what? Make sure that I look the strongest. Yeah. And I got, and I got the job, so. Exactly. Awesome. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. So you can see how we've just given a really great example how understanding the context of how the brain works, understanding the intention behind that helps you to not judge some of the statements it says and how to interpret them fully. That was, you've just given some really beautiful, great um, context of understanding. Okay, now jump over to social. Oh, great. I'm glad you said that. Any questions? Linda, do you have any questions? Hi, Sage. Really amazing presentation. Nice to meet you here online. <laughs> yes, you too. Yeah. Hi, Shana. And everyone else. Um, no, I'll come back to it after you've finished. I just, um, I just want to go back to something at the beginning that you were talking about, Sage. But I'll, I'll come back to it when, when you're ready. It was, it's just interesting for me because I'm so interested and I absolutely love what you're talking about. I can't wait to get started, but my question just relates to um, not doing my measurements and then just listening. So, yeah, and about my creative edge and col colour in my life and colour in my living room. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'll, I'll come back when you're ready. Well, Thank that's you. have got about five more minutes. So, uh -huh. go over time a little bit, but I'm actually going to prepare for another meeting. Mm. So if you, I can answer your question now and then Angela will go through briefly of yours and we'll see if you agree or disagree to the challenge after we really briefly go through your social. <laughs> yeah, we won't go too much over time. Um, so yeah, I can answer that now for you if you like. Your question. Thanks, Sage. Yeah, so my, I, I'm kind of like just thinking whether I'm an um, activator or a connector, but obviously I'm very new to it. But, you know, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, and I know this will all come out, but um, I'm wondering whether, like, because, because I'm a full-time artist and I paint on a full-time basis and I absolutely love colour, and, you know, when you were sharing your space there, like, my living room, like, is full of colour. So, uh, what was it? Um, well, I suppose there's really no question I'm just so excited because yeah. when I was speaking to Shana and I reached out to Shana the other day um I thought right the times are nine and eight and then I got on this morning at 8 a.m and I went no one's there and I'm going oh it's 9 a.m <laughs> it's 8 p.m so I'm <laughs> sitting around for five minutes and I'm going I know these ladies are going to be pronto online but you weren't there and I'm going uh oh I looked back and it was 9 a.m yeah. <laughs> easy easy right. um yeah it, and as we were discussing before, say you come out a diplomat, we might then go through your profile uh -huh. and say, oh, that's a really connector thing to say. So you notice how we've, when we've gone through Angela's, I've gone, oh, that's a real diplomat thing to say. Because yeah. have you seen the circle yet? No. Yeah. I'll bring it up, Sage. Uh, if you're in fact a visual person like a connector would be they've got very highly developed motor neurons in their brain and uh sorry uh mirror neurons and visual processing you like to see things i've got it right here in front of me oh. so if you sit around the outside of the circle so it's actually a sphere but you obviously it appears as a circle if you sit more on the outskirts of it you'll be pretty Wrong as that health type. If you're close to another health type on the like where it joins that number, you'll share a lot of characteristics with the one next to you. But you see this web in the middle. If you go closer to the inside, and we have no way of um, measuring that at this point or identifying that, you'll share with lots of the other health types. Yeah, okay. Those lines that go from the activator to every single one means that if you're closer into the center of that sphere, you'll share more of the characteristics. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned before, it's a bio trend. So there'll be trends on how similar genes will, will be activated and present. And so, yeah, if you do come up with or anything, you might 
super artistic, then you might go closer to the circle. But we'll be able to tell more when we have your profile and go through the mind and genius. They give us clues. Yeah, of course. Yeah, understand, Sage. Just another really quick question. I was just thinking as you were going through the presentation, and, you know, I, I am obviously very new, and I'm sure you can answer this in a heartbeat, Sage, but, like, I've got a very passive-aggressive person in my life right now being my partner, which is ongoing with him. So I can't wait to, you know, step into all of this and okay. hopefully introduce him to you, Shana, because that's part of my plan. Um, but like with a passive aggressive person and someone that might have like undiagnosed mental health issues, like where would they sit? Sounds very diplomat characteristic. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. In a male, and especially in the masculine yeah. element, <clears throat> in a body that feels and a, a lack of knowing how to self express. Correct. The activator often activator connector will pair with a diplomat and that'll be one of the problems because of the direction that the, the morphs are quite direct. So we yeah. won't understand if someone's being passive aggressive, it's like, when did this happen? Like, why didn't they just say something to me? But they'll sit back and ruminate and I'll never forget. Ruminate, 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 never forget. And then they'll say it to you and you're like, what? what was, what's the point? Why wouldn't you just say it to me at the time? And why wouldn't you just come straight out and say it to me? Because that's what you would do if you if you have those mesomorphic tendencies. So, yeah, that's a quite a common pattern. Yeah. Of, mm -hmm. I'd say okay. a definite pattern of dysfunction between the health types for sure. So it helps. That's when it helps to understand your tendencies, their tendencies. Because then what awareness does is you can be responsible for it. Yes, that all makes a lot of sense. I just don't know whether the awareness is going to come for him because I'm at uh, and I'm mentioning it because I'm at a very big crossroads. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, you know, like when you bang your head up against the wall with someone and it just, like, doesn't – because they're not willing to stand up and address things? Yeah. Yeah. And anyway. often with people who are quite – like it said um, in Angela's, she likes to influence people, and that's in mine as well. I like to influence people. So it can be hard to step back and allow them to make the decision when you're, you're quite influential. Yeah. That's a good one to be aware of as well, because we find with the diplomat, they don't want to be told what to do. So they'll dig, right. yeah. and they dig their, they're stubborn as, so they'll dig their heels in more. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. EJ is actually the queen of this conversation, actually. This is exactly her domain is the masculine and the feminine. Oh, really? Um, yes. How appropriate. She's just sitting there, just observing now. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> And I yeah, teach her yeah. stuff too, but EJ is the queen of it for sure. Ah, uh, awesome! I was so meant to be on this call, and I was so excited at eight AM, and I got my scrambled eggs, and I sat here at eight AM, and I went, "Where is everyone?" Until I looked at what I'd written down from Shana's conversation the other day. Yeah, well, you guys can connect outside of this, so for sure, it'd be very oh. love yeah. that. sitting quietly here. AJ, when, um, when we go through things a little bit deeper, does a lot of it resonate with the work that you do? Can you find lots of um, correlations? Yeah. Yep. Yep, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I thought so. Um, all right, let's quick... Starting when they finally bring out the relationship course. They, we did a, a version one um, back last year um and they went through and i've actually done a video on this and talking about the crossovers of the different health types when they're in different roles of relationships um really good conversation for that but i, I cannot wait for the relationship one to come out because i definitely recommend you go and do that one ej and then see um how to amplify everything you've ever done and ever known with that with that lens yeah i want to do it as well oh. with, with the other stuff that i do so um Ooh. okay Quickly go through Angela's social. I'm just going to pick, Angela, I'm actually just going to pick on you a little bit to see if we can find in your social section um, anything that might um, consider the option of entering into the world of social media. It's entirely your choice. I'm just going to see if there's anything there. Um, well, it's not like I'm not doing anything. I mean, I'm in like 15 groups of social media. Yeah, true. It's true. just that I have a, a real principled 
<laughs> view of you don't have to it was just we i think shana and i were just discussing we were chatting the other day and we mentioned it and i said we'd bring it up because i i think us being obviously activators i had a similar response to you and it has been a very beneficial thing for me to open my mind up to and reconsider because and it really has helped and you are you were already in facebook with your family yeah, yeah. yeah. i i don't want facebook in my life okay that is completely your decision yeah. So you can see what's here. I don't know. And okay. Let's just go through one of these ones for you then um, because I'm just wary of time. So uh, if you want to... Maybe pick one of these, the same thing. Expressions of anger. I don't... Especially in public i that's not me awesome so lots of the time especially as we we grow with wisdom and experience we understand that these tendencies of ours are not very self-serving or appropriate at times so we learn that it is possibly something that we may need to um adjust so I think I have that one in mind as well, but I'm not like that either. However, I can think of times when if I've something has made me angry, I don't care. I just express it and it may not be appropriate. I'm like, feel my wrath. It's out. And then you go, Oh, that probably wasn't appropriate. Cause it's, a, again, it's something that, Activators are fiery and they're reactive and they'll just bang. But it's not common because I'm not, I'm not overly a reactive or angry person, but I do have it in me. And, and as another health type who is around people like yourselves, <clears throat> what you perceive to not be a, a aggressive, what you perceive to not be fiery, what you perceive to not be an, an angry outburst in public may very well be aggressive to someone else. <laughs> very much and so this is where it's about your own perception versus everybody else's perception and potentially not now like like i said before we grow with wisdom and things change as we grow older this is a biological tendency that we have so can you think of a time when it has happened and it may not be angry you may have had an outburst or an opinion that someone has taken as if you have behaved angrily. Mm. Can you think of any times, Angela? No, not anger. Well, not anger in public. I mean, I yell all by myself sometimes. Well, let's not let's let's take the word angry out of it, and let's just take um, a reaction you've had that others may not have perceived the way you expected them to perceive it. Well, I think about a lot of, a lot of diet things, especially when I move to a new place and I'm getting to know new people and we go out to lunch and they start telling me um, about what I should eat. Um, you know, I just sort of get, um, what's the word? Um, ah, what's the word when you make a smart ass remark? I can't think of the word. Sarcastic. That's sarcastic. Yes. I just I just get sarcastic and I say, well, um, I don't care to eat that. If you'd like to eat it, go ahead. You know, or something like that. And um, and then they all get huffy or what. Which for you, you're just stating the truth. You're like, well, if you want to eat it, you can go for it. Like 
So um, I think the, those statements are really awesome. And I think I actually have a similar statement as a diplomat in mind. And the way I've always read it is that I can be very opinionated and I can be very direct. And the activator part of me will very often, as much as I'm a feeler, a thinker and a ruminator, there will be a lot of times where I will have that impulsive outburst and those around me will be shell-shocked. And I may not have intended it to land that way, but they will very much have received it in that way. And I can definitely look back at things I've said to friends in the moment where I've just been like, well, it's the truth. Why would I not say the truth? And they've all gone, oh, how could you say that to me or about them or about this? So it's just about that awareness of seeing how sometimes we can just verbal vomit would be the other word, potentially thoughts, reactions, emotions, and opinions that others will not appreciate. And then it's just that awareness of going, okay, that was me doing that thing again. And just being I don't, well, I don't see that in myself. Uh, when, when I get uppity about something, it's because they're telling me what to do not because I'm telling them what they, I think they should do. You know, if someone tells me, I mean, if someone asks me an opinion, I'll give it to them. If they don't ask me an opinion, I won't give it to them if it's about them or I'll give them an opinion about me, but I don't tell other people what to do. I mean, it started with back problems when I was in my twenties, all the way up to digestive problems, all the way up to, whatever problems today, you know, diet problems and stuff. And uh, I just, I just seethe inside when people say, oh, you should do this, you should do that, or why are you doing this, or what, you know, it's like, excuse me, what is your need to know, you know? It is an activator joke. It's one of my activated jokes. And I'm like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> we don't like being told. Bye. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a really good example and it, it'll just make you angry. But see, what's happened is through life experience and having the wisdom, you, you probably don't respond in a really awful way, but it's, it's your, orig your initial feeling is that makes me angry, but you don't necessarily express that because through life experience and gaining wisdom, you've realised that that's not maybe appropriate, but... Yeah, that's quite interesting. And maybe just observe that and just observe it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But see, it says here, practice self-control. So you're probably practicing self-control. Yeah. And when I'm sitting here in lockdown and something, you know, the president of Toastmasters walks out, you know, I scream <laughs> in my apartment by myself. And I yell and I scream and I jump up and down or whatever I want to do. But I'm in my apartment by myself. I would not do that in the meeting or anything else. Perfect. It's a great way of self-control. Thank you so. so much for your time. Angela, I hope you got a little bit out of some of the things you went through today. Yes, thank you. Thank um, you. It's been a very pleasurable experience. Belinda, it was lovely to meet you. You too, Sage. Thanks so much. I learned so much and I cannot wait to get started. I can't wait. I'm going to know what you're Excellent. So I'll be reaching out to those who are watching the replay. We will be reaching out to those who watch the replay. If you have any thoughts, questions and concerns or opinions, we are really excited to always hear them and share them with you and post in the group. I will grab that third slide that we went through today and post that into the group and I would love you guys uh, Angela I will post it into the whatsapp chat would love for you guys to just go through that section and have a look at the three different areas of the mind and see what comes up for you and share share something of that section with the group um, and thank you all for committing and being on here we are going offline for a couple of weeks while we refurbish our next bit of magic that we are beyond excited for. Um, I think the feedback we've had such in some of our hierarchy is that they're just as excited about us launching this as what we are. So we can't wait for you guys to, to hear about this. So, um, uh, Sharna, Sharna, 
I just checked on um, earlier today. I checked on my profile, and they have pulled all the agendas and stuff off. Is that? Yeah, it's just finished for the month. Okay. Perfect. Everything. Everything's back to normal. Yeah. So just basic profile now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, ladies. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Bye.